Hello and welcome to our service uh, this evening. I'm Martin Hollings, ALM, in the Kidder Ismere Parish team. Tonight's service centres around the meaning of the word compline. But before that, let us have our opening sentences and pause and reflect on the day that is past. I'm conquering the technology step by step and I've managed to light a candle in the background. I hope you can see it. Let us think. The eternal God is your refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. So let us pause and reflect on the day that is past. Compline, also known as Compline, night prayer, or the prayers at the end of the day, is the final church service or office of the day in the Christian tradition of uh, canonical hours. The English word Compline is derived from the Latin Complutorium. As Compline is the completion of the working day, the word was first used in this sense about the beginning of the 6th century by St. Benedict in his war. Around the world, Compline can be known as the peace hour, the rest hour, particularly in Armenian. There is small Compline and great Compline for great occasions. It is a very big part of worship and in particular in prayer. Uh, a great American evangelist, R.A. Torrey, who was born in the 1850s, notes that Jesus prayed early in the morning as well as all night, that he prayed both before and after the great events of his life, and that he prayed when life was unusually busy. That last unusually busy certainly got my attention, especially the unusually part of it, because personally I think there was, well, not a lot, Nothing really usual about Jesus' days. You know, that they, they, they weren't, were they? They weren't normal. We've got this phrase, normal times. They weren't normal times. This is a great person amongst people who were flocking towards him. So I think probably every day was fairly unusual. We know we're talking about compline and prayer. And... Um, we know of the many times that Jesus prayed. It's easily referenced six times. The Gospels records words that Jesus spoke in prayer. Just some of them, three prayers in the, the Garden of Gethsemane, three prayers on the cross. Forgive, for, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Luke, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Twice mentioned in Matthew. Father, into thy hands. I commit my spirit, or so in Luke. Or lots of other references at his baptism. Regular time of withdrawal from the crowds is also mentioned in Luke. After healing people in the evening in Mark. Before walking on the water mentioned in Matthew, Mark and John. Before choosing the twelve. Before Peter's confession at the transfiguration. Before teaching his disciples the Lord prayer. Jesus says that he has prayed for Peter's faith in Luke. We know, in addition to this, Jesus said grace before the feeding miracles. Something strange in growing up is in our household, and I'm the eldest of six, we always said grace before a meal. And of course, the Last Supper and the Supper to Emmaus, which is part of our studies. Since the closing of our churches and moving to the online virtual world of prayer and praise, I think the act of praying and prayer has become much 
more important and indeed a great source of comfort for many, many people. Not long ago, I was in conversation with Richard Sundman and it turned out that in the past we were both Eucharist chasers. Oh, what synergy. And I know what he means. I know exactly what he means by that, the Eucharist chaser. Again, growing up through the 50s, 60s, um, the, the vast majority of going to church for me was going to family communion or to communion. It wasn't about prayer. We did hold vigils overnight, like many did at the time, over Easter and things like that. And I rarely went to Evensong, and certainly not to what we refer to as morning prayer, matins, I think it was when I was growing up. And yeah, I, I was, you know, one of those who really thought the most important thing was communion. Um, and literally, I remember being at St Peter's and it was coming around to morning prayer, and I'd up off to St Oswald's in brackets, the Church of Smiles. Um, becoming an ALM changed all that. Uh, significantly, one of the biggest days, uh, the lecture days, one of the Saturdays was with, uh, oh, I've got his name now, Father Alan, Father John, from the monastery. And we were talking about the Jesus prayer and praying in general. And it was one of the best lectures of the whole course, it has to be said. And that sort of changed my mindset. And obviously becoming an ALM and then having you know, part of that was to take morning prayer, you know, that changed things. And while I talk about that, a big thanks to Richard and Kathy, who really helped me in the early days of that, supporting me in those first few services. Um, yeah. Prayer, it was prayer that brought me back to the church on a more regular basis. Jan, the then Vicar of St John's, had a big part to play in that. My wife and I would regularly just play together or individually in the prayer corner at St John's. A recent Bible light, Iona, uh, was mentioned as a special place to find one's calling. Well, I'd like to add Clear Hill to that. Okay. Right now, I'm nearing the end of furlough and we'll be returning to what some people call the new normal, whatever that means. I know, and probably you know, that the church is in the midst of great change. Reorganisation of our diocese is ongoing. It's apparent that people have taken to online services across the country, probably around the world, and we must capitalise on this. We, we really must think about it. We really must. It's, it's, it's our duty, I think, to look at where we're going to be in the future. Some of our churches may not survive, but our faith will survive and our faith will go strong as long as we keep together as a team. Amen. I just want to take a moment and I have a, a special compline prayer written by Peter Ward to end our service tonight. Thank you for being with me, by the way. Compline, written by Pete Ward. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, I welcome you here. The light is gone, the dark is here. The night each night, may I know the light of your presence. Thank you, Father, that you have said you will never leave me or forsake me. Where I have failed to walk in the path you have set before me, Father, thank you. When the world has worn me down, Jesus, restore. Where I have looked to my own strength rather than your strength, Spirit, renew. Lord, I surrender myself into your hands. Those for whom I am praying and the situations I am anxious for you to be at work in, I release them into your hands. Those for whom, those whose lives I long to see transformed by the experience of your salvation, 
I release them into your hands. Those peoples and situations that urgently require your justice, I release them into your hands. Lord, all of my concerns I give to you. Your yoke is easy and your burden is light. Draw me near this night, Lord Jesus. Your presence sustains me. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. Draw me near, Lord Jesus. May thoughts of your wonders fill my dreams. Draw me near, Lord Jesus. Leader that I might come tomorrow refreshed. Draw me near, Lord Jesus. Ready for the working or for the resting that you would put me to. Draw me near this night, Lord Jesus. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, be with me as I rest in you this night. Amen. Have a restful night. Good night. Your is seeing you all soon.